One, two, three, let's go. Okay guys, Nicholas Rosenberg here, Victorville Courthouse. We're here, we're litigating the preliminary hearing for the Justice 8, Free the Justice 8. Woo! Free the Justice 8! Justice, no peace. As many of you know, I'm representing the alleged ringleader, the lead defendant, Eden Alex Enamorado. And I talked to my client, he had a couple words that he wanted me to say to all of his supporters. So one of the things that's on his mind that's bothering him is that Detective Travis Johnson tried to insinuate that the Pomona Police Department was closed based upon the so-called protesters. Now you saw me clean that up later on on re, 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 recross. The judge is letting the lawyers go crazy with their questions. So we have him tied in. It was not closed because of the protesters. I don't like the word protester. Protester to me is a word the government uses when they don't like you. I like activist. I like the word assembly. I like the word marching, advocating, just to let you know. So we got that uh, point out there. Another thing that's on Alex's mind, this morning we heard a lot about the September 3rd charges emanating from the city of Pomona, County of Los Angeles. That's another issue, remind me, I wanna talk about that one. But we also have September 24th, but the question on Alex's mind is why did they wait two, three months before filing this case so that's an open question that i do plan to raise during the bail at the end of this preliminary hearing we do have an opportunity to address the court on bail and that is something that i will um, bring up so there's an issue with all of the i think it's 15 14 or 15 counts that refer to September 3rd in Pomona. So here's what the DA's theory is. His theory is Penal Code 718 allows if any of the conduct occurred in any county, it can be heard in any county, and if there's some touching of San Bernardino County based upon the conduct, then venue and jurisdiction are proper here. So you've heard a lot of questions regarding that issue and the lawyers, the defense lawyers, do plan to raise that issue. It could be raised through something we call a demure, which is D-E-M-U-R-R-E-R. -E -E and typically demures are raised at the first uh, appearance. So when I looked at the conspiracy penal code, which is 182A1, it does say that any overt act that occurred in any county can be the proper jurisdiction. So if you guys remember my whole pepper ball uh, booked into evidence, do you remember that? Yes. So one of the overt acts for count one, it's basically all Alex they're talking about. They don't put his name, but it's really Alex. That's their theory. But it says transported a pepper gun uh, to Victorville. So you remember when I got the detective locked in that it was booked into evidence. Now, right. I tried to ask, it's still there. The judge didn't see where I was going, so she sustained an objection by the people. But it is relevant, because if that gun is in the custody of the Pomona police, it never made it to Victorville. Now, that's the only act, overt act, that touched San Bernardino County. So I should get a pound on that. That's it? Okay, now, the DA claims in the back, we went in the back with the judge, that Alex got a phone call directing him to Upland. Where's Upland? San Bernardino? Yes. yes. Okay, so he's trying to say the phone call gives him venue and jurisdiction. So what's Rosenberg's answer? Show me the phone call. Show me the phone call. Show me the phone call. Okay, guys, so look, uh, when you represent Alex, there's a lot of pressure because you're talking to one people, 10 people, 100 people, 100,000 people, half a million people, the list goes on and on. So I wanna be very clear, okay? Rosenberg, I'm not in it for the clout. I wanna get Alex out. I'm not in it for the clout. I wanna get Alex out. So my win for this prelim 
is probably not going to be dismissal of all the charges. But the win is if Judge Arredondo will agree to OR release with the ankle monitor or cash bail. Now we're asking for 80000 or cash bail with the ankle monitor, no social media, like they did for uh, Jaguar, Mr. Acevedo. Okay, so that's where we're at today. I think we put some points up on the board. I'm the only lawyer that was playing the defense friendly video and I want to pull, uh, put out a call to action. If people have more helpful video from the Victorville incidents, what you can do is email it to me, get it to Entrepreneur Queen. I'm in contact with her. Get it somewhere, email it to me, don't text me, because then I have to take another step. So we have time. I talked with the prosecutor. And by the way, guys, we might go into next Monday, okay? Just to let you know, we did one witness today, well, two witnesses, and you saw that it took all day with Detective Johnson from uh, Pomona. So cross-examining Detective Johnson, it's, it's a little funky because he himself <laughs> is African-American. So I thought they did a good job of putting him in the role. And then I have to use the word, you know, I don't say this, don't, don't hate on me, but this is the quote that John Doe number one called the street vendor nigga, okay? Don't say Rosenberg is racist now. I'm just telling you what the evidence is. So I have to say that to an African-American detective, okay? Let's be honest, it's a little funky, but I have to do my job to zealously advocate for Alex. And the point is, they were trying to say piece of shit, mayete, the N-word coming out of Alex, nope. and yet nobody was being honest about, my clients would say what old boy did. Old boy is John Doe number one. So I think we punched back on some of that. We have video showing the entire scuffle when they're on the ground rolling around. I asked the detective, now detective, did you ever hear the N-word during that? No. Did you ever hear piece of shit, Mayette during that struggle? No. Did you ever hear anything during that struggle? No, no, and no. So like I said, I think we'll put some points on the board as it relates to John Doe one's credibility. I need everyone who's in court, you got to watch the judge. Right. Let me know when she's upset. Let me know if you feel like, wow, Rosenberg landed a body shot. The reason is, is I need to tailor my argument, my closing argument to her. And I can tell that she's getting frustrated with all the questions. So I try to get in, get what I need and get out. I got my videos in. I have some more. Uh, Victorville videos, but get me some more Victorville <laughs> videos that can help Alex. We do have, I'm gonna pick on you buddy, we do have the door opening and hitting the female, but if you have anything else that you think can help, get it to me, because again, we're trying to get Alex out, and I think if we get him out, that's gonna be our, our win here. Now, off the record, I think that, uh, you know, some defendants are looking better than others based on the evidence. And so I don't want to name names and create a whole thing, but you know, there are some folks that they're really lesser involved. So that's what I'm saying. When you represent the so-called ringleader, you're not necessarily getting all those dismissals, okay? Now, here's another spin on the whole Pomona versus Victorville, San Bernardino County. So we now have an argument where 14 charges are in LA County to change venue. Now, I think that one might have a better chance of materializing. So if we were to change from San Bernardino County over to LA County, we would be at the Pomona Courthouse. But with eight defendants at a trial like this, it's gonna go uh, for a long, long time. It's possible to get reassigned out of Pomona. So if there's a way to get to the courthouse, we call CCB, that's the Clara Shortridge Fultz Courthouse in downtown LA, two blocks from my office. Now, that's a trial that favors the defendants. So that's my ultimate goal. If there's any way we can get this into LA and get it at CCB, that would be amazing. So thoughts and prayers in solidarity. Nicholas Rosenberg, free the justice, eh? Free, free the, the justice, eh?
Free the justice, hey! 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 Okay, guys. All right, come tomorrow. Come tomorrow. Come Friday if you can. We will be here. Come tomorrow and come Friday. Court tomorrow. We need court support. Come tomorrow. Come Friday. Be here by 8.30 in the morning. It'll go all day. And then Friday as well. Please join. And uh, thank you, Attorney Rosenberg. I get with Senate. See if he'll email you a copy of what he just shot. If you don't mind. Because this, Rosenberg has to get out of San Bernardino. Is that the way it was Huh? I'm not sure, to be honest. Oh, oh. What did he say? Oh, I'll, I'll share. I actually, it's all on a live. Okay. Uh, so I can share this with you. Uh, I'm just kind of like, I'm not yeah. in your book. Here, okay. See you tomorrow. Are you, how, how, I mean, are you having to, to stay here or do you have to like commute? Or oh, I, we commute. I mean, almost all of us. Oh my God. See you tomorrow, go tomorrow. We are at the Joseph B. Campbell Courthouse 14455 in Victorville. We'll be here in the morning, right? Yeah, oh man, I think I'm going back to Vegas. Uh oh. Of course, we're all still on live, so go ahead. Okay, so one thing that came out today is that Detective Johnson said he watched all this other video, but he said, I'm here today to testify only about one video from the alleged, we call it the big fight, inside the L Super. So I asked him, was there any reason that you didn't uh, show or talk about any other video? And the hidden message is because some of that video helps us, okay? So that's one thing uh, that came out today that I found interesting. So anyways, uh, we're going to do the same thing tomorrow. We're going to be here at 8.30. The lawyers are getting a feel for how each other can work together. And definitely we need to be here at 8.30 because I'll tell you, the judge will not be happy with interruptions and stragglers coming in after 8.30. Okay, guys, Nicholas Rosenberg, Free the Justice Day, punching back. Okay, we just want